This is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. It's a beautiful phone and it's supposed to be super powerful, especially for video editing. So I've asked one of our video producers, Dane, to help shoot the review and edit part of the video directly from the phone itself. Mm, hopefully. We're gonna put the video specs to the test, but first, here's what I think about it. That looks really wow, good. Really first of all, the screen is beautiful, which is no surprise for Samsung. Samsung's history with displays is pretty stellar. This one features a dynamic AMOLED screen that is super bright and colorful, and it has a quad HD resolution, though that's going to drain your battery pretty quickly. And the battery's pretty good too. There's a 4300 milliamp hour battery in the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and a 3500 milliamp hour battery in the Galaxy Note 10. And it comes with a 25 watt charger which should juice it up in just over an hour. But it can go even faster if you buy the optional 45 watt charger. Okay now, are you sitting? There's no headphone jack. Seriously, Samsung got rid of the headphone jack. The Galaxy Note family has always been known for packing everything, including the headphone jack. And in fact, Samsung used to have a whole set of commercials that made fun of all the things on Apple's iPhones, including its lack of a headphone jack. Can I still use these headphones with the tin? Yeah, but you'll need an adapter, or as most people like to call it, a dongle. But here we are, and Samsung officially removed it. AR Doodle is sort of a gimmick, but it's cute. You can draw things on yourself or your friends, and it sticks to them while you move around. Or you can just draw in the space around you. I don't know what I'd use this for, but it's there. Another sort of gimmicky feature is the S Pen gestures. You can use the S Pen to zoom in and out or change settings while you're taking a photo from far away. Or you can adjust the volume while you're watching a movie. But I don't think I'll be using this very much for pictures. However, Samsung says it's opening it up to developers, so we could start to see this being used in mobile games or other apps, which could be cool. Okay, now let's try out the camera. Walking past LG, don't tell anybody. Not sure where to go from here. I think we go around. We just have to crawl through the street. All right, here we are. It also comes with a state of the art camera that lets you shoot like a pro. So we have four cameras on this phone, including one front facing selfie camera, and three on the back, including the wide, the ultra wide, and telephoto. Now telephoto lenses are pretty run of the mill these days, but it's the ultra wide angle lens that's a lot of fun to play with. Samsung added a new feature called live focus that lets you blur the background of your video, sort of like portrait mode. Unfortunately, it's not as good as Apple's portrait mode, although Apple doesn't support video, and everything kind of tends to blur around, especially on the edges of hair. Samsung added a new feature called zoom in mic, which is supposed to focus in on your voice, even if you're really far away, as you zoom in on the camera. Yeah, so that didn't work, so I'm gonna get a little yeah. closer. I mean, we tried, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that didn't work, but I was also really far away. So now we're gonna try to pan the camera and see if it picks up my audio while it passes by. But in general, one of the things we're interested in is how well it's going to be done. But you're also facing me, so it's right. like kind of natural. Did no. You, yeah, no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a fan. There's a new super steady mode, too, that predicts motion and reduces vibration while you're moving. So I'm going to run to the camera. That looks really, wow, good. really good. Gotta keep doing that. Yep. A few more times, Todd. <laughs> yeah. Now we're shooting on the iPhone XS Max. This one does a weird thing where like every time I bounce, it goes a little darker. Do you notice oh, that? Oh, whoa, yeah. I wonder yeah. if that's something to do with the optical stabilization. And now the Pixel 3 XL. That's, whoa, that was a dark Yeah. One. That seems a little bouncier. 
working up a sweat. This one was the bounciest, I would say. I would say Dang. this is the bounciest. So I say like the Samsung is the best, Apple, Not second Pixel. best, and then Pixel, which yeah. is sad. The Pixel is a great camera. Yeah. So the camera is pretty great. Is it the best one on the market? Really, that's like splitting hairs these days, and it comes down to personal preference. Samsungs tend to be a little contrasty and oversaturated, but the iPhone XS Max and the Google Pixel 3 XL also take really good pictures. Okay, Samsung says this is really good at video editing too, so let's check that out. This is where Dane typically edits his videos. It's a powerful computer with 32 gigs of RAM, but he's going to try to edit as much of the review as he can on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which has eight gigs of RAM, and Samsung's promising and even showing at its event that you can edit video directly from the phone. You can edit your videos with the precision of a professional movie editor. You can even use Samsung's DeX software to edit video right on your computer, complete with a full keyboard and mouse. Okay, just gonna interrupt for one second. It was a little harder to edit on this phone than I originally thought it was going to be, but I can imagine it's still easier to edit on this phone than a lot of other phones. The S Pen in particular helped in that process, but Samsung's editing software is not robust. It's good for simple edits, like if you're stringing together a few clips, but it won't replace a computer when it comes to more complex edits. That being said, it actually was not bad editing on DeX using Adobe Premiere Rush. That's an app that you can download that resembles a professional editing software. It was nice being able to utilize my mouse and keyboard with a larger screen, while still having all of the files on the Note 10. But it was pretty slow. My computer handles 4K footage all right, but I couldn't expect our Note 10 Plus's 8 gigabytes of RAM to handle the 4K footage that we shot on it. So if you're looking to do some deep editing on this phone, I would suggest that you download Adobe Premiere Rush, that you hook it up to a computer with a keyboard and mouse, and that you invest in the Note 10 Plus with 12 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, back to the review. So the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is a really solid phone. It has great battery life, it's really powerful, and has an amazing display. Galaxy Note fans will find it well worth the $1,100 cost. But for everyone else, it might be a little too much. Get it to me by Wednesday. Eight gigs of RAM? <laughs>